Yippee-ki-yay, mother. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. We've got an update to my set for infographic for Datacrons, folks, and I hate that I have to do this, but there's been more elucidation on the impact of these datacrons that I wanted to convey to you because frankly I'm not completely I'm not the sole arbiter of truth and I've discovered more things you can see here uh, let's see you can't see yet you can see on the top of, of this infographic it says version 1.1 the old version does not have a version number on it which will be rectified in further versions and set overviews uh, I've changed the team comps on the bottom right and the chart is a little bit different not a ton has changed but a few important distinctions have been made here folks so if you want to get this infographic as usual you can go to my discord server you can go to the infographics channel which is toward the bottom of the entire channel and or of the server and you know you can get the updated version i left the old version there just for fun and just so you guys can compare it's there's nothing too crazy but there are a few important distinctions so one thing that i want to make sure uh, you know before we jump into this we're trying to be pretty quick there's a few different changes here that are important the, the biggest thing that I want that I'll be referring to, however, is this level six empire ability number one. The empire inflicting a debuff, they're going to be reducing their cooldowns by one, and then uh, so that that's going to be, I mean, continue to be very important. And then the one with the number two with empire is also somewhat important because we're changing that. It says not really on it, and uh, I, I'm not changing that particular part of the graph is actually going to be fairly difficult to change so I, I apparently we're, we're just leaving it hooray but true but that grit ability for number two is going to be something that we want for troopers i also made a distinction for lord vader number two and number three for his abilities i'd originally thought that both were uh, about equal and they're kind of not so let's actually go to the game now folks Whoa, we're in the game of madness. We're going to go to the game. Let's talk about some of these abilities, folks, uh, because most of them are going to be for Empire. A couple of them. I added a Ray team on here as well. So we've got Lord Vader. And uh, the distinction with him that I didn't have in my old infographic was the fact that sometimes he was, if he's with Maul, he's going to want a different level 9. Yeah, so he's still going to want that cooldown reduction one. Of course he is. That, that one's pretty amazing. And, you know, you'll find the chart for it on the infographic and everything, the corresponding numbers, etc. However, with Maul, you probably want the 6% ultimate charge instead of the mastery gain. Those are the two that I think are the best for Lord Vader. The mastery gain is nice when he doesn't have Maul with him because he's going to be ramping up quite a bit and you don't want to have to rely on your ult as much. It's, it's a very nice, fairly strong ability. However, if you can get the level six for or the level nine for the the six percent of ultimate charge, Maul is going to supercharge that instead of giving you a bunch of or you know some mastery at least when he hurts himself from uh, cutting from his anguish from doing his mass assist and or his, you know his his mass assist and his whatever else it's called the the multi shot the multi hit he's going to be hurting himself and be giving Lord Vader a ton of a ton of mastery or ultimate charge gosh mastery and ultimate charge to me are so linked it's, it's difficult for me to apparently spit it out but those that's the distinction guys mastery for the non maul teams but with maul ultimate charge makes sense to me now darth vader i mean he's he's got about the same thing one thing that i didn't add even in this new infographic is i do like both of his datacrons actually with level nines both of them are pretty good. The The one that he auto-revives is pretty interesting because he gets that bonus turn, and in 5v5 at least, he's going to be able to solo a surprising number of teams. 3v3 
he's probably not going to be able to chain everything together as perfectly as we prefer, and therefore he may not be a great target to solo characters. Uh, one of those weird instances where someone is better at soloing things in 5v5 rather than 3v3. Now, uh, you know, he wants... both of these teams are good. We talked about them in the last video. However, we don't need to remain. Now, Dash is an interesting one because he actually has a few that he really likes. And I, that surprised me, but I think that there's some valid argumentation to be had. So let's actually look at the Datacrons for Dash. You're always going to want that level 9 that gives him bonus turns, folks. That's, that's definitely true. For him, you want this level 9 where he takes a bonus turn every time your opponent takes a turn. However, for the level 6, there's a few different awesome things that you may want. So the first one might be this Gains Prepared, Reduce Cooldowns by 2. That works really well for Young Lando and for Young Han solo teams to be able to solo thing, or not solo things. <laughs> Though, I suppose if you if you get solo really strong, you could, you could uh, say that they got soloed. Uh, however... The prepared for cooldown, or reduced cooldowns by two. This is pretty neat, actually, folks. And, uh, I mean, I'm interested to see actually what the play between Young Lendo is. If he hands more prepared to Dash, if Dash, like, regains it and reduces his own cooldowns. The next one is, whenever smuggler allies critically hit an enemy... During their turn, that ally gains 10% offense stacking. This is the one that people were most commonly doing. I don't know if 20% extra offense is really the best. I, I know that people have been doing it a lot, and I guess it makes some sense. However, another 20% extra offense, at, as opposed to like that level 9 that you're already getting, 100% extra offense, and doing all this stuff, like it, it's okay, but it's, I mean... 20% extra offense just doesn't seem that impactful in the light of how many other boosts and benefits you're going to be getting. The other one that I think is actually being fairly overlooked is this final one, this, this fifth one. Whenever smuggler allies target another ally with an ability during their turn, they both gain defense, health, protection, and offense. If you can have, if you can have Vander Chewy hand that uh, like if you have a team with dash and vendor chewy and either young lando or han doing doing this uh, consistently throughout the fight you're actually going to boost your dash considerably more by the end just by giving him all that extra offense and they both gain all of these stats it, it can be really strong if you have two characters in there constantly targeting each other that's going to be, in the end, more effective than just getting the 10% offense gains, in my opinion. So the, that's something to keep in mind, folks. A few different valid uh, ways to approach this Datacron. I may try to reroll it in, at some point in the future, but uh, until now, we'll we'll just kind of we'll just kind of wait. Now. Uh, for, so for the dash teams, I mean, I like I like the dash Han Chu, of course, that does okay. You know, it's just raw, crazy offense. I think that the more elegant version is going to be Dash Vander and Young Lando. To be honest, they're going to be taking down Galactic Legends in my in my guess. Uh, I don't know, three v three should be interesting. Now, uh, with with the EP uh, team, EP Mara. Just want that cooldown reduction one, guys. You can just stop at 6, frankly. You don't need a level 9 unless you want more dodge or you want to be able to hit more. Uh, you know, the accuracy. I think that as far as though as far as the stats go, getting accuracy mods are going to be it's gonna be a little more interesting. Now, the one that the other thing that I wanted to point out, folks, is under Veer's lead for troopers, you want that grit because grit is actually a buff, and that means that at the start of the turn, everyone gains 10% turn meter. Now, if you're like me and you have Admiral Piet at a pretty decent speed, and I know that he's not the very fastest, and I know that some people aren't going to be able to get him nearly this fast, but 353 is gaining another 20 speed on top of that uh, because of the Veer's lead. So he's already 373, and then you gain another 10% turn meter from that buff because that's how Veer's lead works. 
you're going to make him very fast, he's going to be threatening a lot of teams, and be able to potentially even outspeed some of these crazy turn meter Kron from set 2. So, uh, something to keep in mind, folks. Just remember, make, your, make sure your Dark Trooper can link up with, with Piet. Uh, make sure the Piet goes first. Now, otherwise, I mean, Grand Inquisitor, Iden Versio. I like the idea of Iden Versio reducing her cooldowns a lot because maybe her mass assist and her revive mechanic are going to really mess with Wampa. I don't know if that's enough to mess with Wampa in 3v3. I think 5v5, if she can just spam that AoE and just cause mass assist after mass assist on Wampa, it might really wear him down too fast to go, to be honest. Uh, I like the Krennic with this TIE Fighter pilot, I don't know, this, this should be an interesting comp. You, you probably want the the Omicron on Krennic though, if you want that to work, and then of course the the Zeta on Death Trooper, it might be too much of an, of an expense, and then you probably, I mean, I would need to get another Relic level on Krennic and on TIE Fighter pilot for that TIE Fighter pilot Kron to work at all. And then finally, we have Ray, and I, I like the idea of putting the ramping damage on Veteran Han, just because he, uh, you know, he's going to be doing a lot of damage anyways. And, uh, I don't know, this, this seems interesting. You can also put, I like the idea of putting grit on him so that he only has health. So then uh, it's harder to, harder to take him down, uh, you know. He's going to, he's go it's going to be easier to get him into damage immunity, I guess, instead of having someone one-shot him, etc. And, I mean, is it the very best thing? I mean, putting a lot of dodge on this team is actually fairly funny, because Ray's tough to kill anyways, Hermit Yoda's tough to target, and if you put a lot of dodge or deflect on them, it's just going to make the team even more difficult to shift when it's on defense. And then if you're having a, ramped, a ramping up veteran Han, over time he's going to be doing so much damage that people are going to really struggle against it. Is this going to be the best version of the team? I doubt it, but... But it's something that I've been thinking about at the very least. So, you know, and it uses uses uh, a character that we don't typically get to use or get to see anyways. Uh, let me know what other awesome combos in the comments, folks. Remember to hit that thumbs up button, etc. If you like this video, hopefully short and sweet. So guys, thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails. <laughs>